Playing any type of open world game is all about exploring and doing what you want to do, but there are times when this will lead to players making huge mistakes, and that's exactly what we're looking at in today's video. This is another 10 mistakes beginners make in Red Dead Online. Before we do get into the video though, I want to let you know about a project that I've been working on. It's no secret that I've created a lot of gaming channels and because I've created so many, I know how to get them partnered in about one to two months without needing to promote them on other social media accounts. And I always get asked, how do I do it? That's why I've created an in-depth class on Skillshare. It goes through the basics of creating a new YouTube channel, but it quickly scales up into doing keyword research, planning videos, recording, editing, creating thumbnails, and eventually getting monetized, where you can actually start running your YouTube channel like a business by outsourcing the work. If you're interested in having your own gaming channel, then there is a link in the description down below, as well as you can find it as the pinned comment, and that will give you a free month of Skillshare where you can use that time to watch through my class, and at the end of it, you will understand everything that you need to know. So links to everything can be found in the description down below. Getting back into the video, two years ago I went through the 10 biggest mistakes you can make within Red Dead Online and to this day it is one of the best performing videos on this channel. But since then a lot has changed. That video is still relevant but now we're adding another 10 mistakes players make on top of that original video. So the first mistake that players make is sticking with the default settings. This can be found within your pause menu and going all the way down to settings. There you'll have the option to change your controls, your display, your audio, your camera and in general. If you're on PC you'll also have an extra option where you're able to change your graphics and what you change here is entirely up to you. It's entirely up to you of your preference of controls as well as visuals. But just some settings that I recommend changing especially if you're on console is to go within your controls and here I recommend changing your third person and first person controls to be set to standard FPS, change your running mode to be toggle to run, change your tap assist to hold and then change your hold to real to be on. All of these settings will make your life so much easier because now you will no longer need to spam X or A depending on what platform you're playing on for you to sprint. You can just hold your left analog stick and every time you do want to sprint you could just tap it down and then carry on aiming in the direction which you want to run. As to hold to reel, this will make fishing easier if you are looking to fish within the game. You no longer need to use your analog stick to go round and round in circles to gradually reel that fish in. You can actually just hold X or square depending on your platform and it will just make life a whole lot easier. The other controls and settings are entirely up to you, but I do recommend looking into them and changing a few of them. The second mistake is playing through showdown series for money, gold or even XP. For showdown series, even if there is double rewards or even triple rewards, it's still not the best game mode for you to go in if you are only looking to go and get money, gold or XP. If you are looking to go through showdown series because you enjoy it, then by all means, carry on going through it. I'm not going to stop you. But as for money, gold and XP, there's so many other and better ways in which you can do it where you're able to get a lot more in a shorter amount of time. The third mistake is not resetting your awards. This is pretty obvious and it was also included within that previous video, but since then there's been a lot more new awards which have been added and now there's even one award which you can continue to reset no matter what. It doesn't cap out at 10, you can continue to reset it as long as you meet the requirements and this is for your bounty hunter. If you get 10,000 XP with your bounty hunter, which doesn't take too long, you will be able to reset these awards. There's other awards which you should also be focusing on, so this is also another mistake. For a lot of them, they will be completed naturally over time, but others, you need to go out your way to do it. And I do recommend taking some time to watch a previous video where I go through all the awards which you should be going through because it really doesn't take too long and you can get yourself a lot of gold out of it. The fourth mistake is getting the trader before the moonshiner. And yes, for a lot of people, every time we talk about this, people complain that that's impossible. You can't get the moonshiner before the trader. And to answer it, Yes, you can. The requirements for you to unlock the Moonshiner is for you to reach rank 5 as a trader or for you to do one trader cell delivery. And for most, it sounds like you need to spend 15 gold bars for you to bind the trader 
and then do those requirements and then you can unlock the moonshiner but in all honesty you don't a trader delivery doesn't need to be your trader delivery you can actually team up with other players and tag along with their trader delivery and you will still be invited to go into the moonshiner role the only thing that you need to focus on is grinding 25 gold bars and then you can go and use our discord which a link can be found in the description down below and you can find other players who have already unlocked the trader and you can tag along with them this doesn't need to be anything fancy you could do a traded sell delivery with only one good and at the end you won't be getting a crazy amount of money but you will be able to unlock the moon channel you just need to go and use the gold to buy into it the fifth mistake is using animals to fund the trader and this is partly why you want to go for your moonshiner before the trader because the moonshiner is so much more passive especially at the early stages whereas with the trader you need to hunt animals and you need to get a lot of them for you to get 100 goods so that you can actually sell it on for the maximum amount of money instead of using your normal animals you should be looking to get legendary animals and when you start out within the game there is a chance that they'll spawn in within free roam but it's a very slim chance this is why it's also better for you to aim to unlock the naturalist also before the trader that way you have a higher chance of getting legendary animals within free roam plus on top of that once you reach rank 5 you can go over to harriet and you can talk to her to get legendary animal missions within these missions you can kill and skin the legendary animal come back into free roam stall out within your hunting wagon and take that over to cribs where you can donate within the trader role it takes about two legendary animals for you to max out the material bar within your trader another thing worth mentioning and this isn't included as a separate mistake but it is an additional one sedating legendary animals really isn't worth it financially the money is good for completing categories but ask yourself how long it's going to take each category requires you to get a free roam legendary animal and how they spawn in is entirely based on luck the sixth mistake is not taking advantage of the afk money grind this is being from your moonshiner and your trader if you are in a position where you can set both of these up with no problems whatsoever we're talking about taking just a couple minutes then it's worth setting both of these up that way you can have them both running in the background whilst you focus on a completely different activity an activity which hopefully you're enjoying that way you'll have fun with the game because you're doing what you want to do but also you're earning money within the background if you want to take it a step further what i do is i set both of these up and i don't even play red dead i'll actually put my controller down whilst i'm in menu with cribs or marcel and i'll actually just use my pc to edit videos after 50 minutes i'll turn back to my monitor to continue playing the game where i can do a moonshine delivery and also a trader delivery or even a trader resupply and then just go for this all over again the seventh mistake is completing main missions and immediately looking to go into one of the roles this used to be the way in which you had to play the game the idea was that you'll complete main missions where you have about eight to ten gold bars and then you'll need to go into stranger missions awards daily challenges to build gold up to eventually go into one of the roles preferably the bounty hunter but now this play is not the best way to play it's also not the most enjoyable way to play after you complete your main missions you'll still have anywhere between 8 to 10 gold bars but instead of going into stranger missions daily challenges and awards you will head over to saint denis where you can start the blood money content this content got a lot of complaints from hardcore fans but if you're a beginner it really doesn't matter you've never experienced anything like this before so you'll be able to go into this and have fun with one-off missions plus also you can eventually push the opportunities and this is the best way in which you can start to build that gold up and eventually once you do get 15 gold bars that's when you can go into one of the roles the eighth mistake is not taking advantage of weekly updates another aspect of this game which is complained about a lot from hardcore players just because there really isn't anything in there for hardcore players but if you're a beginner definitely take advantage of them on a weekly basis or as things currently stand on a monthly basis we'll get these updates which provide you with bonuses as well as discounts these bonuses and discounts will vary every single time it'll be something completely different but no matter what it is just make sure that you're going into that type of game mode which has a bonus or you're stacking up on the items which have been discounted 
a lot of the time there'll be roles that get discounted so if you haven't got one of those roles you can buy into them at that point at a cheaper price compared to any other time and there will also be times when those roles get bonuses so you'll be able to earn more money more gold more xp so definitely look out for the rockstar newswire and even though it gets a lot of hate from those that have been playing this game for a long time if you're a new player it's still worth going through them and number nine don't focus too much on money and gold now on this channel it's one of the main things that we talk about and provide the latest ways and the most efficient ways in which you can earn money and gold but despite this being the main focal point of the channel when i actually play through red dead online i don't really care too much sometimes you should just be going through a game mode not because it pays out well but because you enjoy it this is why earlier when i said if you're looking to go through showdown series for money gold and xp it's not worth it but if you are going through showdown series because you enjoy going through showdown series then continue and carry on playing the second that you start linking your enjoyment to how much a game mode pays is the second in which you no longer enjoy the game you'll be sat there going through the most tedious activities of the game such as going through collector sets just because it pays out more when you could just be playing through other gameplay features which pays less but you enjoy a thousand times more but if you are looking to maximize money in the game by focusing on collector sets then this brings us on to mistake number 10 which is focusing on random sets since that previous video where we talked about the 10 biggest mistakes the collector role has changed quite a bit collector sets are now broken down into guaranteed or random sets pretty much that Jean rope collector map still shows you exactly where collectible locations can be found but depending on the collector set will also depend on whether or not you find the collectible which is listed for example the coin set now it shows every single location but you can go to those locations and you don't know which coin you're going to get you can actually get multiple of the exact same coin all in just one day there's actually one coin which has a less than one percent chance of showing up this makes it so much more difficult for you to complete one of those coin sets it'll actually take multiple days that's why it's better for you to focus on the guaranteed sets the guaranteed sets are those such as tarot cards wildflowers alcohol bottles anything like this some of the cheaper sets that you can sell within the game they're so much easier to finish but there you go there are another 10 mistakes beginners make when first starting red dead online if you do have any questions please feel free to leave them in the comment section down below but anyway guys i hope you guys did enjoy if you did enjoy don't forget to leave a like and subscribe but for now i'm going to see ya